What's up, Fritter fans? Jonathan here with you, and I've got Brad back with me for another cool video I'm about back. So let's talk about the sling first. Okay. I think that is probably the um, most unique product. Probably the most yeah. unique for sure. So um, we talked a little bit in our, our last video about the kind of origin of that, right? right? The kind of the old school three tiered sharpening killing hand thing. Oh yeah, the, the prison shank. <laughs> the prison the shank. The original. Um, um, then you graduated from that to the extruded. The extruded aluminum, aluminum version. Right. And uh, so a little background, the sling project had been something that I had been playing with for years okay. before I came out with the, the Gorilla Sling okay. to sell. And when I finally got to the point where I was working on Headhunter full time and I was like, right, I'm going to make this happen. I reached out to a lot of people that I had known for years that, that loved Hawaiian Slings. Okay. It's kind of a smaller community than so. the Pole Spear. Very much so. um, and I asked them a question and it was, do you like your sling to float or to sink? Mm -hmm. And unanimously, they all said, if I'm going to buy a nice sling, I want it to sink. The only time I ever lose it is when it floats, floats away. That's fair. So I looked at that and I, it, it really opened up a lot more materials, including right. aluminum. Right. And we came up with the extruded aluminum sling, which is, um, it was about 11 inches long. It had machine pockets at the ends where we pressed in bushings to mm -hmm. keep it quieter for the shaft to ride on. Right. Um, a 3 8 ID. And what was really neat about it is that it had a, a T-track on the top and bottom. Right. So you could adjust where the handle was. You could adjust where the reel mount was. You could add little you parts could add, People pieces. added flashlights, yes. people added this, GoPros, they added that, GoPro mounts. Yeah. Um, it was a really a versatile platform. And uh, you know, people loved it. They, they, that's, were, they were accurate, that's they were comfortable. That's what switched me from a pole spear to exactly. a sling. Exactly, yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and then we mounted a reel to it. Okay. And so maybe about six months into selling these things, I was trying to come up with some different things we could do with them. Mm -hmm. And when we mounted the reel to it, we had to develop a shaft where a, a, a slide ring could work properly yep. instead of pulling the line through here. Right. Um, you know, we could have a slide ring on the outside of the shaft that would stay here. Right. The line would go to the reel and you could pull some line off. It didn't have enough power on the shaft to actually pull line off right. the reel, which some people, when they first get it, think it's gonna unspool the reel. Correct. And unfortunately it can't. Yeah. Um, so you pull a big handful of line out, keep it organized, right. which is a little Hard. difficult. Yeah. And when you shoot, now you've got a shooting line, a shooting line in anywhere from 10 to 16, 17 feet of range, depending on which line you have. Right. Um, and you're now attached to your fish, which is huge. Game changer, really. Total game changer. For me, like when I was using my pole spear, I was comfortable using my pole spear at deeper depths, right? Because I had a hand on or my float fish line. or float line, right. right? So I was able to, you know, hit a fish in a little bit deeper water that maybe I wasn't comfortable doing with a right. sling because I'm sending a piece of steel down range totally attached to nothing. nothing. And so it just became more work for me using a traditional sling in the 50s to 90s, right? It's right. just like, I don't really want to back see the shaft. Yeah, I really don't want to back dive yeah. this again to yeah. like hunt this fish again. Yeah. So it was all pole spear. And so when I had the ability to attach a reel to a sling, again, game changer for me because now I could do those deeper dives and it virtually was like a spear gun, triggered a spear gun, which is what you called it, right? Right. Um, so that was kind of the cool little like play on uh, how to make this thing a Bahamas perfect. Yeah, and I mean, I remember I think 10, 15 years ago, when I was working on boats in the Bahamas and we'd go yellowtail fishing mm -hmm. and we'd chum for hours, we'd catch some yellowtail. And then as we're done, when we're done cleaning the yellowtail and we throw all the skins and everything overboard, right. I'd jump in and there'd be groupers on the bottom. And Snacking I was, on all the bits. Yeah, yeah and they'd yeah. be full and they'd be yeah. just sitting there with their fins <laughs> out and laying right, there. Right, right, right. And I used to take just a, a water bottle, like a Zephyr Hills bottle, mm -hmm. and I would wrap it with maybe 70 feet of mono. Okay. And I'd snell the mono to the, the very front of the shaft. Okay. And I'd swim down the Hawaiian sling and I'd shoot the grouper from straight above. Right. So you give them a crown shot. So right. if you stone them, great. Right. If you don't give them a crown shot and, and they swim away, I've got this water bottle tucked in the back of my board shorts where I could pop it out okay. and it became my buoy. And that, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's how much things have changed in yeah, 15 years. Quite right? a bit. Quite a uh, bit. How funny. So as people started to use this sling and they started using it in deeper water and they're using it with reels, mm -hmm. I started to see uh, people 
holding the sling, fighting a fish. Mm -hmm. They can't let go of the sling. So they're, they're putting on their arm, yeah. tucking it in their belt. They're tucking it here. They're tucking right. it between their legs. Right. And they're pulling this line in, which is getting a tangle on their weight belt, on their arm, on their snorkel, on their, on their leads, yeah. um, dive knife, whatever. And it wasn't like a spear gun. The spear gun you just throws you can behind you. Float and it behind you right. and you can swim slowly forward right. and work your way like you were on a float line, work right. your way up that line right. and keep the rest of it behind you. Right. And I saw that as a huge uh, downfall. Yeah. Um, the other thing I didn't like, even though the aluminum was very comfortable, uh, I was spear fishing the national championships in Tampa. I can't remember what year it was. I think it might have been 15, okay. maybe 16. Um, and I was on a wreck and I'm laying there and I see a fish and I draw the sling back. I should have been using a gun, first of all, but I draw the sling back and I just hear, and all these fish just bolted. Interesting. And it was murky. I thought I had a shot on a, you know, I think it was probably a sheep head or something like that. So right. the points fish, yeah. It, it, it was a points fish yeah. and they all bolted into the wreck. Mm. And that noise, I was like, God, it doesn't really matter in some areas. Right. In other areas, it's a huge it's problem. Huge deal. Yeah. And so that really made me want to find a material that was quieter, right. that was buoyant, but maintained sort of the same geometry. Right. And so we came out with the Gorilla Sling 2, which was our first teak sling. And we'd already uh, set the shop up with CNC woodworking equipment. We were already making the handles for right. the Gen 1. So we fabricated the Generation 2, and, we, and that's, that was the sling we sold for up, up until recently, up until yeah. this year. Right. Um, and it had a little bit different geometry. The bands were oriented vertically as opposed to horizontally like the first mm -hmm. sling. And it was a little bit too much to grip for some people. So yeah. some people- It was beefy. It was beefy. Yeah. It was hard to, hard to hold. So we finally came up with this, and this is the one we just released this year, which is the, the Gen 3, we call it the G3, the Gorilla 3. And we've gone back to that standard band orientation. And we came up with a way to fabricate the wood with really thin walls. Mm -hmm. So we can have a very small grip here. Right. right. And then we, faded into a larger front which has like that spear gun cuttlefish shape mm -hmm. so when you're tracking you it's have less drag right. right right and we knew a reel was already that big so we we had that width to work with so the reel can mount on there and not right. really take up any more space it's not going to be sticking out to the side because well, sometimes awkward, you right? get to track up or down so right. the reel's already doing that right. so having that shape doesn't hurt and this like and that exactly. helps flow the water around exactly. it and it's amazing that the generation two sling i originally built flat mm -hmm. and you couldn't track it and I added just a little bump out on the sides and it tracked so much better. Hmm. Um, and you wouldn't think something that's 12 inches from, you know, right. seven inches from the pivot point or whatever it is, right. it would be a big deal, but it really is. It makes a difference. Um, so we did that. We've got the handle on here, um, the same interchangeable bands, which is another thing that we kind of have been around, but we really dialed it in. Dialed yeah. it in where we've got plugs that go in here, a tool that goes in. You can change your bands from it comes with a medium, you can go heavy, you can go extra heavy, you can go light, right. you can change the lengths, yeah. and it lets someone dial the sling to their specific strengths. Much like someone would do on a spear gun, whereas all the other slings out there are this like kind of whipped on yep. string that the average Joe is not going to know how to do, right. or even if they know how to do it, they're not gonna have the correct tools to do it the right way, right. unless they bring it to us, right, and we can do it for them. But this allows you, like you said, to just instantly change the bands real quick, like I know I've been on trips before with people who have the original band and they're like, yeah, it's just not powerful enough for me. I'm like, okay, well give me three seconds. Yeah. You know, let me pull the plug, cut it, put the plug back in, and now you've got a shorter, stronger band. So right. it's just really, really cool that that uh, works the way it does. And so this was the, the G3, right? Awesome selling now. And then you've got something new. So it's, it's something that we started developing uh, in the very beginning of this year. And here we are in August, right? And it's not out yet, but <laughs> um, like I said in the other video, this year we've added on top of our existing CNC woodworking equipment, mm -hmm. um, we've added a full CNC machine shop. So we have two new pieces of equipment this cool. year. And we had to get all that up and running. Yeah. And we've got the G3s shipping. We've got this design for a line release okay. that um, we've been playing with. It, it needs a little bit of refinement, but basically it works off of a, a cam system so that it's actually held in place by the shaft. And as the shaft comes out, it goes down. So that lets you wrap the line from the reel, from a float line, whatever right. you want, and wrap it around here and you have a full line release there. Essentially, yeah, line release. So that's a handle. All these slings were already slotted right here to accept that handle. Cool. I just haven't been able to 
make it last the way weeks. you want it done. Yeah, exactly. I've been using this one for six months now. Okay. Um, just this last trip, it started acting up on me, mm -hmm. and just because of that, I'm not ready to ship. Right. Right. Um, when I am ready to ship, people will know, and they'll yeah. be able to take their G3 and add that bolt the handle and just it. bolt that right on. Nice. Which is a big deal, right? Because once the reels came out on the Gen One. Um, you know, everyone was, there's this huge learning curve trying to huge. figure it out. It's you know, not like, easy. It's not easy. No. Um, and so you've got to like manage the line with your pinky or like put the line out to the side right. and you effectively become like an underwater ribbon dancer trying to like yep. get this line to not get caught on the sea fan and, or the coral. Yep. It's definitely something that, uh, you know, is a huge, huge, um, I mean, I say a huge issue, but it's really just like a nicety. Um, and yeah. so now you've got the line release potentially coming soon, later this year, maybe early next year. Um, I think, again, it's going to be another game changer. I think it's going to change the way guys potentially use their, their slings. With it, the will. Yeah. it will. And the thing with the sling, and this is kind of how I describe it to the people that ask me what's better, pole spear or sling, is that I think a pole spear is, uh, a sling is harder to get good at, right? Mm -hmm. A pole spear is easier. Correct. The learning curve is easier. easier. But you can get better with the sling. If you are a skilled marksman with a, a Hawaiian sling, mm -hmm. you've got more range, you've got more speed, right. um, and it's just a lot more fun. Yeah, It really is a lot more fun. And that's my take with customers, right, is that Hawaiian slings are more fun. Mm -hmm. If you want to guarantee that you're going to land more fish at the start, right, right. go with a pole spear. Because pole spear, like you said, is just a pole spear is easier to learn. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. You can hold it with one hand, so equalizing you can equalize easier, with yeah. it. If you're diving in current where you need to hold the bottom, right? Um, you've got that option. There's a lot that makes a pole spear better. A great and tool, yeah. Honestly, that analogy that I've used for years describing the two, mm -hmm. in the last year or two, there's such a variety now of pole spears and improvements, you know, that took years and years to, to get up to. to get there, yeah. Pole spears have really come a long way. You have rollers now that that give you increased range. Yeah. And that extra couple feet, I mean that's that's all a big the difference. difference. Yeah, yeah, it's all the difference. Yeah. yeah. So we'll definitely talk about the rollers and the new pole spear designs in our next video. So you'll have to make sure you check that out. Um, but super cool, man. Super stoked to uh, talk about the, the G3 and what's potentially coming new with the, the new Hawaiian sling from Headhunter. Um, so again, man, thank you so much for coming on the channel. You got it. And uh, we will make sure that you guys check out all of our cool videos. Go make sure you check out the origin story of Headhunter and how they came about to be this awesome company that holds uh, multiple different brands uh, and basically gets you everything that you need for your Bahamas trip. It's absolutely epic. So uh, if you guys did find value in this content, please be sure to like or subscribe if you have not already. And then uh, go check out Brad and his team at uh, Headhunter, right? It's Headhunter just, Spearfishing. Headhunter Spearfishing .com. Yep. And all and then, of our gear is available here at Florida Freedivers. So they'll be absolutely. the first ones with the, the line release. When yeah, we yeah, have it, they'll have it. Absolutely. So keep a lookout for that, and we will see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did find value in this content, please be sure to leave us a like. And if you had any questions on any of the material that we covered in this video or any other video, leave us a comment in the comment section below. And as always, you can find all of our cool products like this cool hat on this awesome fish target on our website at flfreedivers.com. We'll see you in the next one.